Hello everyone, welcome to the final video of setting up a home IT lab. In the two previous videos we looked at how I set up my networking as well as how I set up my servers. If you haven't seen those videos, there are links in the description below so please do take a look at those videos. In this video I'm going to be taking you through how I'll be configuring and connecting my two QNAP, uh, sorry my three QNAP storage devices and connecting them to my servers. Two of my storage devices have a 21 terabyte capacity and the third one has a 12 terabyte capacity. So let's take a look at how I'll be configuring them and connecting them to the servers. So in order to connect my ESXi host to my storage server, I want to make sure it needs to be configured correctly. Um, I'm using the QNAP storage server. It's got 21 terabytes. Um, for yourself, just try and make sure you've got the user manual or user guide for whatever storage server you're using so that so you know how to configure it correctly. Um, I'll just log into that and go to storage manager and from here what we'll do is as you can see I've already created a uh, some a volume and a storage pool so just to show you my storage server I've got eight disks one of them is just as a backup so it's not active at the moment and the other seven are using RAID 5 I believe and in total I have 21 uh, terabytes of storage, 21.65 terabytes of storage. Now what I want to do is go to my iSCSI storage. Uh, as you can see I've already got the mapping for the iSCSI there, it's uh, QNAP1. Let me just create a uh, iSCSI target with a map LAN. Click on that. Go through this. Because this is my second QNAP storage server, actually, in fact, I'll just call this yeah QNAP2 because it's my second storage server. So I'll just give it a name. Click on next, next. Um, storage pool one doesn't have any free space, so what I'll do is I'll choose this option, which is to create an image of a file on a volume as an ISCSI LAN. Click on that and click next. And what I want to do is I want to just use all of my capacity just because it's just a lab and I'm not really um, too fussed about it so here we are and then just oh, go back actually I don't want instant allocation sorry I just want, I want thin provisioning so it grows gradually click on next next and that should be created so yeah, just click on finish. This one's ready. I think the previous one I made wasn't connecting correctly, so I'm just going to try and connect to this one. Now right, let me just close this and go back to my ESXi host. So what I can do now is log into my where are we? Where are we? Where are we? So if I go to my storage, as you can see, I've only got one data store attached at the moment, which is the internal hard disk, 600 gig SAS. I need to connect my uh, storage server through iSCSI, so I'll click on that. What you want to do is, if you don't see your iSCSI software adapter, just click on Rescan, and that should come up. Once I click on that, click on Software iSCSI. Or configure iSCSI and what I did is I added a, a, a dynamic IP address which is the IP address of my host my, sorry not my host my storage server my QNAP the one that we were connected to and it's automatically picked up because my storage server's got two IP addresses one on the dot 10 submit and one on the dot uh, 10.60 submit it's picked up both IP addresses and it's also picked up the mapping so what you want to do is also make sure you've got your VM kernel NIC um, added so it can communicate um, with the storage server. Mine is on the 1060 VLAN and it's dot two and it's communicating with the storage server which is on dot 200. Save that. And let's see, let me just do a rescan and go to devices. 
here we are. And as you can see, I've got my iSCSI target, which is my QNAP server, storage server, and it's giving me my 21.65 terabyte of storage. That's the LUN that we just created, if you remember. So if I now go to uh, data stores, new data store, create a new VMFS data store, that's what I want to do. Yep, I'm just going to call this uh, QNAP2, so that's my second storage server. Click on next, select my device, click on next. Um, yep, before, that's the amount of free space, after, that's how it's going to look. Happy with that, click on next. Oh, and it's going to be VMFS6, that's the latest one. And we want to use the full disk, I'm not too fast, it's just for my lab. Click on next, it will give me a summary, and then I'll finish. So this is just a quick guide on obviously how I'm connecting my storage server. Yours might be different, as I said, just make sure you've got your storage servers manual, if just in case you can look up on the internet and check how you can connect your storage server uh, as an iSCSI target, and how you can create um, LUNs on it and so forth. Um, yeah, so that's connected. If I now go back to... Well, storage, let's just minimize this networking. Let's refresh. Right, as you can see, we've now got two storage devices, uh, two data stores. Data store one, which is the internally connected uh, storage, which we, where the operating system is installed, and my QNAP data store. So what I can now do is any virtual machines I create um, can be stored on here. Speaking of virtual machines, what we now need to do is just minimize this. What we want to do now is create our vCenter server um, virtual machine. So I'm just going to right click on virtual machines, create a new virtual machine, deploy a virtual machine from an OVF, OVF or OVA template, click on next, give it a name, call it VCSA, vCenter server appliance. I can drag and drop it into this area here, but I'll just click on here to select it. And because I've already got it mounted, I'll click on the, uh, to just make sure you know where your file, your vCenter server uh, file uh, is mount is so you can locate it. So I'll click on my location where it is, and then VCSA. And from there, what I'll do is select the OVA file. So here it is. Click on choose. Click next. And I want to store it on my QNAP storage server because I've got plenty of space there. Click next. Agree to the license. Agree. Click on next. Uh, for now, I'll just keep it on the VM network. I'll change that later. Um, deployment type, tiny vCenter server with embedded PC, PSC, platform services controller. What I That basically just requires, um, it's a VM with two virtual CPUs and 10 gigabytes of memory, and it requires 415 gig of disk space. And that's It can manage 10 hosts and up to 100 VMs. Um, I'm just going to go with small which can manage up to 100 hosts and 1,000 VMs, and I'll keep it as thinly provisioned. Click on Next. Um, there's some configuration settings, which can be done now or can be done later. Just to show you, so it's the uh, IP address settings and so forth. I'm going to keep all of this unconfigured for now. Um, just because I'm going to configure this later on, but as I'm saying, this is just to show uh, how the main idea of this was just to show you how to install the vCenter server appliance as well as make sure you connect your storage devices for your lab. So let's do that. At least one extra disk image will be provided that will be ignored. That's fine. You can ignore that. And I will say finish. and it will start deploying my first virtual machine of my lab. So once I do that, I can then start practicing how to configure my virtual uh, machine, which is my vSense server appliance. I can start playing around with setting it up. I can then add my other host onto it. 
I can also connect um, my other storage devices. So I'll have instead of having uh, over here instead of having uh, two data stores, I'll have uh, hopefully well uh, not two, I guess one main data store. I'll have three data stores. This is just taking a little bit long to load, and yeah, so that's basically the way of set, the way I've decided to set my lab up, which is using uh, VMware ZSXi host as well as its vSense server appliance uh, using vSphere 6.7. You, your setup might be completely different. You might be using uh, two PCs or maybe two different types of servers, uh, different storage devices. Just make sure you know um, your devices and how you can then interconnect them and configure them. That's the main thing because obviously different devices are set up and configured in different ways. The overall setup when it comes to installing the OS when it comes to iSCSI and things like that, and configuring the storage within vCenter, uh, within VMware, it's 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 pretty much the same. But it's just in terms of how much storage capacity you have, what sort of processing you have, um, the resources that your servers and your storage have, and also how you connect your physical network and so forth. So it might be completely different to obviously what I've got. Um, mine is just to show you my setup. You can. Set yours, set yours up in the same manner I have, I have as mine, or you could obviously use completely different kit. But that's hopefully um, the main bulk of it. Yeah, there's my vSensor server appliance. I can now power it on. Or just click on the fade button. Oh, it's failing to power on. Ah, yes, it's not. Apologies, it's not powering on because it's still. It's still setting up, so I've, I've rushed there a little bit. But the idea is you've got your physical lab and you just set it up in the way that best suits your environment and your hardware. So, yeah, hopefully, thank you very much for watching, guys. Once this is done, I'll finish off setting up the adding the other storage devices and hopefully do another quick video of showing you guys the complete setup. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please give it a like, subscribe, and please share, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.